go. All right, and then do you want to uh, highlight me, I guess, to start? Oh, now you're muted. You are pinned right now. Okay, sweet. Um, yeah, hi everybody. So uh, uh, Mike Murphy and I are going to show you guys Hoopsalytics. Um, Mike, you want to introduce yourself real quick, and I'll do the same when we get started. Hey, everybody. Looking forward to uh, hearing your stories and uh, where you're all coaching from. And, and Mike's a coach at Urban High in San Francisco, and I coach uh, girls varsity up in Truckee, California. Um, so yeah, I've been a, I'm kind of a serial software entrepreneur. This is the sixth company I started, and I've been coaching like probably my 12th year coming up. So not quite as experienced as guys like Mark, but uh, you know, I'm trying to learn as fast as I can. And uh, you know, I've always been like a numbers guy and business guy, and kind of applying the same principles we use in running a business to basketball. Um, and it's, I think is really valid. If you guys have ever seen the movie Moneyball, um, Oakland Days did the same thing you know, way back when and a lot of the NBA teams and D1 teams and high level teams using analytics and they're just trying to bring it down to the, the lower levels of uh, the basketball and, and then all the way back up. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Um, so I'm gonna show you what we did with our Trekkie girls team this year. Um, and then we also did some college games as well. Um, I'll kind of jump back and forth. Um, but, you know, for those of you guys that are kind of new to the whole thing, um, when you're looking at your, your box scores, you know, the first thing that we do that you've probably seen with Huddle or anything else, it's all of the box score stats are um, video linked. So, for example, I've got my player, Caitlin, here. I can make this a little bit bigger. Um, if I want to see, like, the four shots that she took, just click on the box score. And you can see all of the shots, et cetera. So basically anything that's underlined, which is pretty much everything, um, is linked to video. So it's you know, it's it's a great learning tool for the players for one. You know, it's not they don't just see the uh, you know, the six turnovers in their box score, but they can actually what they see what their turnovers look like. Um, like less for coaches, you know, the the numbers are one thing, but um, you know, the eye test sometimes, you know, validates or brings clarity to the uh, to the numbers that you see. Um, so I'm going to go through uh, some of our tools here. So this is a interactive box. So the first thing is a game summary. Um, so you get kind of cool pictures of uh, what happened during the game, um, as well as uh, different comparison stats. Again, everything is video linked. Um, one of the neat things you can do with this is this is a game where we were, um, you know, we were leading, and then things sort of falling apart. So what I can do is I can isolate on a particular part of the game. And sort of see what happened, and then the comparison stats change as you go. So this was like a 13 to 5 run, um, and again, you can see the uh, you know turnovers, the four factors in that particular part of the game, or anything else. Um, you know, free throws, two points, they lose was five to six in the stretch. You know, we were uh, a lot worse. So it's kind of a nice way of uh, of looking through like the the bad points of the game and seeing you know why did we lose that game. Um, so the you know, game summary is pretty handy. You also get play by play. And again, everything is video linked, so you can go ahead and play video of the events and, and give it the eye test. Um, so one of the things that as coaches, what you want to do is you want to figure out, okay, who are my best players? So let me go to um, a full season. Let's go back here. So we had uh, 23 games in our season this year. So what I can do is I can go to multiple game stats. You know, I can choose all games. I can just choose the wins, loss. Both ones, etc. Um, and go to like the team stats for the entire season. And this takes a second to bring up. And so, you know, analytically, you know, a lot of coaches talk about points per possession, right? So, you know, how many points did we score in each possession? How many did the other team score? And so, what we can do with Hoopsalytics because we're basically gathering play-by-play uh, -play data of the entire game is you can come up with a, a points per possession for each individual player. So over the course of the season, um, you know, when Caitlin was on the floor, the team scored 0.7 points per possession and gave up 0.6. And so the net was uh, 0.06. So if I want to see who my uh, you know, most effective player was, I can just sort on the net points per possession. So you know, surprisingly, Charlotte, who wasn't super skilled, but was a very good defensive player, she actually had the biggest impact on the team. Um, 
you know, just looking at her, I would have ne wouldn't have necessarily thought that. Um, but you know, analytically, because she plays really strong defense, and I think she had like the second best uh, defensive points per possession. Um, yeah, she was the second best defender, um, and that's why she was more effective than some of the other other girls. Likewise, we can also do a plus minus, so we can um, adjust it to 32 minutes. Um, which I'll show you what that looks like in a sec. So you know, plus minus is you know when the player's on the floor, like if you're Team scores 10 and gives up five, it's a plus five. But, it's, but you need to correlate it to the amount of playing time. So you're comparing the same, um, it's kind of apples to apples. And same thing with Charlotte. Um, you know, she was, if she had played the whole game, we would have theoretically won every game by five points or so. Um, so, you know, between plus minus and points per possession, those are really good indicators. And one of the things about traditional stats packages is. Defense is not always well accounted for. I mean, basically it's steals and defensive rebounds, and that's kind of all you get with a lot of these stats packages. But when you kind of factor in the intangibles and how many points you're actually giving up and that sort of thing, you get a much better indicator of, you know, who are your best two player two way players are, who the best defenders are, um, et cetera. Um, the other thing that can sometimes happen is you get coattailing, where you say you've got a strong player, and then a weaker player is often playing with that stronger player, and that can um, change their stats. Thanks. So for example, I can take out um, Ashley, who's one of my stronger players. And then I can see how everyone else's stats um, get adjusted when we take Ashley out of the equation. And in a second, see what it'll appear. So now Ashley's out, so we can now go sort by like it was good. So um, this girl didn't play that much, but Charlotte was still best net. Um, but you know, Jasmine actually kind of carried the load when uh, Ashley was not in there. Um, so it's kind of another nice way to look at who's effective and who's not effective. Um, you can also do this on a lineup basis as well. So it's not just individual players, but if you want to see which lineup combinations are doing well, you go into lineups. You know, you have some of the stuff with, with huddle, but not like to this degree. Um, same thing that points for possession, so you can see, uh, you know, which lineups were the most effective, see how much time they played, and you can sort by time to see, you know, which ones got the most. Um, you can also include or exclude players in the lineup, so I've got like a couple of girls that you know, maybe just played like in garbage time, so I can take them out. And then the numbers, um, the lineups adjust accordingly, so you can just see the, the ones that you're most interested in. Um, another cool feature of Hoopslytics is you can also segment on a particular part of the game. So, for example, I can look at like my fourth quarter lineup, and we can see, uh, you know, in the fourth quarter of all our games, which lineup um, was the most effective. Um, yeah, uh, let me just check the chat. I see there's one question. Uh, okay, <laughs> Mark says if you have questions, put them in the chat. Okay, cool. Um, all right. So the next cool thing you can do is uh, coaching stats. So, um, you know, as you're tracking your, your team, uh, you know what your sets and your plays are and that sort of thing. So when you score the game, you can say we ran, you know, play X or play Y. Um, for inbounds plays, it's a great way to do this. So these are the different types of sets. We've got our blobs, our baseline inbounds plays. Um, these are the outcomes. These are all the ones that we ran. Um, if you want to just, again, see the turnovers that came from all your blobs or your defensive fouls or whatever. But the cool thing is you can go in and um, see exactly what the plays were. So we've got you know, one called Jordan, for example, which is, I think, called also known as America's play. Everybody runs this play. But we can see, you know, we ran it you know, 0.67 um, points per possession. I want to see the, uh, the three pointers that we made from this. Um, again, you can just click on these and see how it goes. So you guys have probably all seen this play before. Um, but there it is. Um, like so, and again, you know, you can get points for set outcomes. Sometimes you don't get an outcome, like the ball's deflected out of bounds and you reset. So this only reflects when there was actually an outcome from the play. Um, you know, this is, this I play is something I ran with a, a lower level team in the past, which was really effective, but at the varsity level turned out to be not so effective. So we kind of abandoned that pretty quickly and 
move to some of the other plays. Um, and again, you can also do the same thing for your offensive steps as well. So your set offense, uh, you know, details each of the different sort of sets that we ran. Um, you can see you know, which ones were effective, which ones weren't effective. You know, if there are turnovers, you can you know, see how that happened in them. You get with the eye test, but you can also quantify these on a on a um, on an analytical basis. Um, the other thing that we've recently added is um, I'm going to switch over to a college game now. Is we have a it's called action tracking. So you know, coaches kind of run two different ways. Some of you guys, you know, like to call a lot of plays and sets. Um, other coaches are kind of more flow and transition based, where they just emphasize actions. So we did a, uh, a D3 game between um, two of the best D3 teams in the league, uh, or in the, in the country, actually, um, Rockmore, which happens in the alma mater, and Johns Hopkins. And so we can look at Rockmore, for example, and see what kind of actions they ran and see um, you know, how many they did. Again, everything's video linked. Um, and you can also do a scoring efficiency. So, for example, um, you know, when Swarthmore had a pink touch, uh, they would expect to get 1.08 points out of that possession you know, if there was at least one pink touch in that possession. Um, they do a lot of uh, high post entries. And again, you can uh, do this on different players as well. So, um, you know, high post entries to number 54, so they happen to be um, pretty productive. Um, it is probably a little greeny here um, just because of Zoom. So, I mean, there was a foul there, but you can see that, um, you know, for Swarthmore, if they're doing more high post entries to particular players, they're going to get uh, better results as they go. Um, and likewise, you can do the same thing for um, for defense. We've got something called a defensive praise and fail. And I don't know if we've done any, um, yeah, we didn't do any in this one, but let me go back to the other one. Um, So it's like the defensive stats that we take. Um, so a phase and failure, all these actions are customizable. So if you run certain actions like a double high screen or stagger screens or whatever, you want to see how they go, um, you know, you can add them and track them and measure them as you go, um, which isn't really anything you can do with Synergy easily or Puddle or any of those things. So I did a few uh, like defensive fails here so I can see what the different fails were. So. Like for example, Caitlin got beat back door a couple times, got beat one on one, um, and you can also see, you know, the different totals for the team, individuals, etc. So you know, defense is all about accountability. So it's kind of a great way to, you know, seeing who's getting beat and just kind of making everybody accountable as you go. Um, Bill, yeah, uh, I just got a message in chat and I just put it on there. But okay. a, a coach is wondering. I'm sure there's other ones. Um, how the games are broken down is what is his question because he's used other ser other services and found a lot of errors and breakdowns which require him to change it and and change who the player was a stat was given to. So how do you get how is the games broken down? So so I'm like like synergy and huddle. We don't have a, a team of people that are breaking these games down for you. Um, you would basically be doing this yourself. Um, it doesn't you know. Depending on the level of detail, um, like for a high school game, it takes me probably about an hour and a half to do. Um, if you do less detail, it will take less time. Um, you know, the, the thought is, you know, as a coach, you're going to be watching game film anyway and only know you, you know what the things that you want to track are, whether it's specific inbounds plays or sets or actions or whatever. Um, so if you think about it, it's really not that much more time to break it down yourself versus having, you know, one of these expensive services do this. Um, and, and Mike will kind of demo how the how the scoring side works um, the, towards the end of the podcast. Um, but yeah, I hope that answers that question. I think it did. Thanks. Okay. okay. Any other uh, chat things before I I move ahead? There was one, but Michael. Oh, the one was: Do you evaluate lineups on points per possession or VPS or both? Um, you can. Definitely do it on points per possession. I believe we do VPS as well. Let me see. Um, yeah, just the points per possession mm -hmm. right now. Well, actually, no, for the team, for the offensive stats. I think we do. Yeah, we just do uh, the points per possession now. Um, we can add VPS later. Um, I Personally, I think the points per possession is a much better measure because it takes into account a lot of the intangibles. Um, yeah, we can add the, uh, the VPS at a, a later date. I don't think we have it. 
the next there's one oh, more. actually you know, never, never mind we do have it yeah so on the team the team side you can see what the vps for the lineup is as well um the question one more on the software access um how many can access the software at one time i don't i think he means uh probably staff members or players i'm not sure what he's at what he means but how many can yeah I, yeah so so this is all web-based so so when you um you know, set up your account you can give logins to individual players and coaches and staff um so i can show you what my account actually looks like so these are the different people and everybody can access it at the same time um, is there a limit bill there's a go no there's no limit okay um but you would give diff different people different roles so like okay. you know admins can go in and, and modify games and add detail and that sort of thing players can just look at their stats um like less with parents um one of the other cool things you can do with this too is you can see who's who's been active so uh sort of like the last um you know years worth i can see that you know charlotte was the one that spent the most time on the software caitlin next ryan the next and uh you know, I can also see, you know, what Charlotte was looking at and what her activity was. So it's kind of a nice, sort of a big brotherish way to see you know, who, who's the most engaged with, uh, you know, measuring their performance and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, let me go back to uh, um, another cool tool. So we've got a um, interactive shot chart, shot charting tool. So you guys have all seen shot charts before. Um, so ours is kind of special because you can do some cool interactive things with this. So for example, I can, let's say I just want to see my two point shots that were jump shots, like so. So these are just the jump shots. Um, it also will, the stats will also change as you go. So um, my team this year was absolutely horrible at jump shots. Um, I think at one point I like one for 38. So, you know, I saw that, like, okay, we need to go a bit better at this. They're still pretty bad, but they got better as the, as the season went on. And you can see, you know, you can also isolate on different players. Um, so these are uh, Jasmine's jump shots here, um, et cetera. Um, you can also uh, uh, filter by distance. So as a analytically minded coach, I really hate the long twos. What I can do is I can basically say, okay, let's show everything outside of 16 feet. Um, you know, two for 16. Who's, so those are the Jasmine shots from outside. Here's everyone else's. So you can see, you know, pretty quickly who's shooting the long twos. You know, Caitlin was actually decent long two, so I probably wouldn't discourage her. But, you know, someone like, you know, Jasmine who's two, six, two for 16 or Tessa who's two for 12. Like, yeah, you guys should probably not shoot those or, you know, just shoot, shoot them as threes, um, et cetera. You know, even. Even this girl Ryan, who's our best shooter, she was still um, yeah, not great from um, long range. Um, and then the other cool thing you can do with this is you can sort of segment by um, uh, different regions. So, you know, one of the things I've been fascinated with as a coach, just doing some reading, is um, is no middle defense. You know, some coaches will will force baseline, some will coach will force middle. So what you can do is you can say, okay, let's uh, take all the two point shots um, that were in the middle of the floor. Um, so 36%, all right, let's just take all of them. And I can uh, get all the threes and twos and stuff. So from the middle of the floor, we were 35%. If we exclude them, turns out we were 20%. So it's like, hmm. <laughs> The other team should probably be forcing us out of the middle. Um, what about the opponents? Same deal with opponents. So opponents outside of the middle were 20%, and inside the middle, they're 37%. So you know, based upon this, you know, we're going to a, a, a force baseline scheme next year. Um, you know, a lot of the, you'll see this in a lot of NBA teams, um, but this is kind of a nice way to sort of validate um, the analytics behind it and you know why you should do that. Um, and if Anybody has good theories in chat why uh, the uh, percentages are so different between the middle and the baseline? I'd love to hear. I've got my own theories, but I'd love to hear from other people as well. Um, Bill, we then, got a couple, uh, Bill, we got a couple questions. Yeah. Two from Nancy that are really good questions. Um, can you break down defensive stats by lineup or or by type of G? defense example man-to-man -man or two three zone 
Right. So for the coaching staff, let me tackle the second one first. So um, you you also can label your sets, defensive sets. So we ran sometimes we ran a box and one, sometimes we run zones, sometimes we run man to man. Um, and so if you run different kinds of zones, for example, like sometimes we'd run a two three or a one two two, um, occasionally a three two, and so you can you know see how those different schemes worked. And again, all the numbers are clickable, so you can see you know what the turnovers were when the other team scored on your particular zone, um, what that looked like. Um, and huddle and synergy, I think, only tag that as zone period. Right. Yeah, you know, again. Yeah. They keep the pass because they, they're not your team. They, they don't know yeah. really what you're in. <laughs> yeah, and, and sometimes they can't even tell if you're in a zone or a man. Like, like if no, you're it's, in a it's box and one, for it's, example. It's inaccurate sometimes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's we actually had a call this morning with another coach that, that was his complaint about how in particular is that you know they'd miss a lot of things and 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 then yeah. our other question about shot team shot chart also can you sort team shot charts by the type of shot allowed or success of that shot um uh, actually let me go back to the defensive one you asked about the lineups on the defensive oh side. yeah go ahead um yeah so let me just uh, bring that one up um and yeah you can do do um lineup data on defense as well. Um, takes a little while to bring that up. But yeah, so from here, you can just go to lineups and you can see uh, your different defensive lineups again and defensive points per possession, et cetera. Um, so you can pretty quickly see, you know, which lineups combination of your best defensive ones you know, with a significant amount of playing time. Um, and then there's the question about shot charts. Um, yeah. So like as, team, it, the, the way, the way it's worded here is, uh, can you sort team shot charts by the type of shots allowed or, okay. or the success of that shot? So, yeah. So the shots allowed, you'd be uh, marking your opponents. Right. And then you can say, let's look at, so for three point shots, we, um, so like stock floater, players, so, I think, I think for yeah. like mid range floaters, layup, yeah. I think that's what she's meaning. Yeah, exactly. So for the two point shots, for example, we have, uh, well, we call them runners, but they're essentially floaters. So these are where the opponents shot runners from. And you can see, you know, these ones that they made, these are the ones that they missed. Um, you know, likewise, there's like a you know, catch and shoot, for example. This is where the catch and shoots came from. There's the misses, there's the makes. Um, there's all of them. And, uh, and again, if you want to see, like, for example, did the other opponents when they're shooting from the side of the floor, what was their percentage? And 19% from here. So there's lots of cool ways of kind of slicing and dicing the shot charts and, you know, seeing um, what's successful, not successful. It looks like our opponents here, they had a really hard time um, in this side, two for 30. So it's like, yeah, maybe we'll let them shoot more from out here. Um, so yeah, a lot of the stuff is, is really, really fun to kind of play with and, you know, you get some pretty cool insights um, with this level of detail. That's all um, we got right now. Okay. Uh, let's go to rebounding. So along with um, shot charting, you can also do rebounding charts. This is an option when you're scoring, um, but I find it's pretty interesting. Um, so these are all the, uh, you know, 717 rebounds. Um, so the light blues are offense, the dark blues are defense. Um, and you can see the different types. So we want to see just where we make our offensive rebounds from and maybe three-point shots. So these are the all the offensive three-point shot rebounds. So these are where all the three-point shots went to. Um, for two-point shots, you can see obviously two-pointers are a little bit more clustered inside because they don't bounce as far. Um, but it's kind of an interesting thing to see, you know, where these go. Um, and the really, really interesting thing I discovered this year is if we look at free throws and um, everybody's free throws, you can kind of see that there's more free throws that are on the left-hand side than on the right-hand side. Um, and that, I've got a theory behind that, but again, if anyone thinks they know why that would occur, um, let me know. But you know, as, as far as like having an extra uh, rebounder outside of the lane, 
probably a good idea to keep them over here just because a lot of these long rebounds especially tend to go more left than they do right. Um, yeah, and actually you mentioned the assist charts earlier. So the other thing you can chart is where assists come from. Um, so uh, for our whole season, this is an assist matrix. So from Caitlin to Charlotte, for example, there were two. Um, you know, from Caitlin to Ryan, there were nine. Um, you know, these two are a pretty good combination. Tessa and Ryan, um, Ashley and Ryan were really good. They're actually good friends too. So you can kind of see, you know, who's assisting who and to, and to, to you know, uh, what degree. Um, it's kind of a cool visualization. And then you can also uh, chart the locations too. Um, so this is, you know, where all the assists came from for our team. Um, so again, it's kind of a nice way to visualize, uh, you know, how you're creating opportunities and that sort of thing. Um, and then you can also just do this um, strictly out of set offense as well. So if you're, you know, not transition, if you're just running a set, um, this is typically where a lot of our um, assists will come from. Um, and then the you know, different colors. So these are two pointers, um, three point assist, et cetera. Um, so again, it's a pretty cool, cool visualization as you go. Bill, can you click on three point for your assist? I just want to see if they came from the paint. Um, Do all uh, from the, this is from the set offense, yeah. So it could be any. Um, okay. So yeah, you know, some from the paint. Again, you know, our, our team wasn't that great at shooting threes. Um, I think that, you know, if you look at like the more of the college level, um, you're going to see a lot of like driving kicks. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you know, again, everyone, everybody's team is going to be different, but it's a kind of a cool insight to know, you know, where these things come from. Um, yeah, and then the last thing I'll show before we go up the mic and show you how to score is I'll give you kind of a real life example of how I use some of the stuff. Um, so look at my games. I can go to season stats and I'm going to just uh, mark off my close games and then see um, what happened offensively. Um, so I had, you know, my best shooter was uh, with Ryan, and um, you know, so I was like, so what happened with Ryan in our close games? So she was you know, nine for fifty-seven, not that, not that great. Um, but if we isolate on the fourth quarter for Ryan and recalculate it, um, ouch, zero for eighteen. So yeah, for me that's kind of a fail um, on my part as a coach. I probably needed to give her a little bit of a. A, a breather in our close game, so it should be more effective. Um, you know, so this sort of insight you'd, you'd never figure out unless you had a tool like this to, to watch that stuff. Um, so, you know, it gives me a little more insight on how to, you know, better manage my, my players next year. Um, so, yeah, this is kind of an example of, of how to use the tool to really, really understand your team, you know, both analytically, um, you know, as well as giving things to eye test as you go. And uh, yeah, that's kind of all I had on the analytics side for now. Um, are there any other questions before we move on to scoring? I don't have any. Okay. Um, do you want to give Mike the uh, or Mike, you want to share your screen and you can um, sure. show us how to score these things? Yep. Okay. All right, so this is a college basketball game between uh, in the, the Centennial uh, Conference between Swartzburg, uh, Swartzburg, Swarthmore and Gettysburg. Um, so it's as easy as just, let me just get this out of the way, um, entering your lineups, okay? So you just hit the substitution button. And uh, generally, I like to just go to pick five players because you should have your roster loaded. So you just would pick five players. I've already done that. Um, here are the five starters done. And then you also do the same. You just make a uh, substitution for the other team. Um, and then you pick their players. Now, a lot of you will only be scoring your own teams uh, and not doing stats on the other teams. So, um, but it's still helpful to put, you know, the starters in and also, uh, but at the same time, you really don't even have to score the other team if you don't want to. Um, and and, and just, to, just, just to clarify on the other team, um, we usually use what's called an other player. That's just everybody. So you're still scoring the other team, but you're not. You can 
score the individuals if you want, or you don't have to do it for that level right. of detail. And then uh, this button up here is where you get your scoring options, right? So if you want to track your offensive actions, defensive praise fail, this is where you would click on all of those options and then away you would go. Okay, so uh, you're loaded, you're ready to go and you hit start and then you play the video. Should be loading here in a second. Normally that would start a lot faster, but yeah. Yeah. Oops. The Zoom's probably buffering it. Yeah. How many coaches do we have on the, on the, with us tonight, Mark? Uh, we have 31 right now. That's great. Fantastic. So you can see as the, as the video is loading, and again, it's usually within a couple of seconds, but the, the scoring panel appears on, on the right-hand side. I'm just gonna restart it here. Scoring detail. Okay, so again, we hit the, here we go. Here's the start button. And we have started action, okay? Okay, so we're across half, now, right away, we can see that the team on defense is playing man-to-man. -man. So um, for our sake, we're going to uh, go ahead and record the defense and uh, other type of man-to-man, -man, or we can add a new type. We'll just go straight man. Okay, and then we know that that's the option. And then here in the event timeline, you can see that it's been recorded as a man-to-man. -man. Okay, now it looks like uh, there's a fist up here from 23. Uh, we don't know exactly what this play is. It looks like it could be a four out one in, but we'll call it fist just to get started. So we can hit set offense. Um, here's the fist play. And now that's been recorded. Okay, here we go. Okay, so. Uh, in terms of level, level of detail, uh, we've got right there, we've got a deflection by 30. So if you want to just go deflection by 30, then that's, if that's something that you want to track, then you can do that. Um, and here we go. We've got a dive there by 31. So we can say, um, we can call that uh, praise. Um, and that's number 31. And what it was was a four die. Okay. 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 Now we're back into set offense. Okay. Again, the fist goes up. Uh, you can um, remark that, or you can just let it roll from the previous one. It'll stay in the same one. Okay. There's a DHO. If you want to track that, you can. Um, that would be an, under an action, okay? So there's an action, number 23, uh, just gave it DHO, okay? Okay, so what do we got here? Got a little action here. Number 50 just dropped off that assist. So we're gonna give him credit for that. Number 50, the assist came right about here. On we go. 31 is about to make a three-pointer. Three-point made. Number 31 looks like to me it was uncontested. The location was here. And on we go. Now you can see in the, up here in the, uh, in the top left area that we have a running scoreboard as well. As well as you can you know, hopefully see it from either the game or whether you get it, you know, televised or not. Okay, so now we're in, looks like man-to-man -man defense. Okay, we've got a, a 
kind of offense we've got here? Looks like a wing entry. So the set offense is going to be a wing entry and off ball cycle. Okay, so you see he's cycling there, he's cycling back up, there's a DHO. Okay, so there's an action. Uh, looks like number 30 is just dropped to DHO on number five. Okay, now number five into number 30, that's another action if you wanna track it. So number 30, just got a paint touch. Okay. Be a DHO again, and there's a catch and shoot. So let's see if he makes it. He made it. Okay, in that case, I like to go back. We know the assist is coming, so we credit the assist, which is from number 13. Looks like it comes right from here. Number 30 is going to make a three pointer. And again, it was a catch and shoot. It doesn't look like the catch and shoot is available, so we add a new type. Shoot, add, click, location, and on we go. So as you can see, all the actions that you're doing are now becoming part of the event timeline. Okay, I'll do a couple more, and then if anybody has any questions, you know, feel free to, to uh, you know send a text. And you can also do, uh, do like different turnover types, um, offensive foul types, etc. So turnovers can be. You know, bad passes, okay. boss dribbles, et cetera. So it looks like um, Gettysburg and the red are pressing. So you can go press. And then once you're into the press, you click on this right here. And you say, okay, what type of press are we in? It looks like a one, two, two, three quarter pressure. Or it could be a light two, two, one, three quarter press. Right? So it looks like they get two guys up front. So let's go with the light two, two, one. You update the event. And now at the end of the game, you'll know how your team did against, you know, this light pressure, or you'll know how your light pressure performed against, you know, what percentage it, it, it resulted in uh, for your defense. Okay, so another break. All right, so it looks like in this situation, we've got 24 is going to go in for, and then he makes this shot. So it's a 24 looks like a dribble drive. You can call it a runner if you like. Um, we'll call it a runner because he kind of lets it loose outside the lane. He shoots it from here and whoop, that one did not go in. Okay, so what do we do? We go back to the two point runner and we make it a miss, a missed two point shot. They okay, update it. Okay, offensive rebound right there by number 31. To give the location. Here we go. And then there's a pass, which I know is going to be, result in a made three. So let's record that assist for 31. Again, the location right off the rebound. 24 is going to make the shot. Now, coaches, when you're, you know, watching your games, you, you know, you're going to have a mental, you know, memory of, of everything that happened. So you'll know if this shot is made or not, um, which will speed up your process. And of course, you know, the more you do it, the, you know, the faster you'll get. Um, but we're going to call this a three-point make by number 24. And that one is a catch and shoot. And it comes from this area. Money. And Michael, can you quickly show how to do a uh, make a film session out of some of these events? Sure. Um, so let me go uh, out of this game. And this is the same game right here, game two, as this game three, okay? So, uh, oh, you mean as a, as a comment in this one right here, Bill? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, so uh, let me go back to the scoring detail. So I'll click on where I left off, which is this three-point catch and shoot. Now, um, here you can add a clip and comment, right? So you can say, um, you know, great footwork, Preparing for the shot, and we'll give this kid a thumbs up for you know being a, being ready to catch and shoot. And then we add the clip and we comment, and then you can see down here uh, in the bottom left, uh, the clip the the comment comes up. Great footwork preparing for the shot, right? Now let's just click back onto that time, and 
that'll bring you back to that location in the video or should bring us back to the location in the video. Oops. Oh, you know why we're not finished scoring this? That's why we yeah, yeah. If you, yeah, if you pause the thing, go back. Right. So um, go here. Okay. So there's the assist, there's the pass, there's the make. Okay, and on we go. And you want to go to the all the clips you did uh, previously just to show what the film session looks like. Right. So um, you know, I, I hope I gave you, you know, a good taste of you know, how detailed you can go. I mean, it's really just, I, what I'm showing you really is, is um, you know, just the tip of the iceberg. It depends on what you wanna do, what you wanna focus on, um, what's, what are your keys to victory? Um, anything that you feel is important to you as a coach, you can track and then you can use in film session, you can use, you know, uh, you know to, uh, you know, like Bill said earlier, have a more in-depth look at your team. At the end of scoring the game, uh, all the film clips have been amassed in the same location. So we click on the first one. <laughs> I got a little bit, I told about Bill about this one earlier today. Um, so you can see that this team, wait a minute. Oh, a chance for four. Oh, okay. All right. So there's four minutes or so left in the game. This team, Gettysburg, is winning 28-26. But like I told Bill earlier today, they lost to this team, Swarthmore, by 20 points, 25 points, only a week earlier. So, you know, for them to be this close and in the game this much, if I was watching film, you know, with, with the team afterwards, I'd want to highlight some of the things that we did or didn't do. And so I made the comment here, you had a chance to go up four with four minutes to play. Got to make that uncontested reverse layup. So let's watch it. And here it is. Oh, just, I thought a lackadaisical effort right there. So I gave him, hey, you know, let's think about this. Caution to the wind. Let's go to the next clip. Okay, here's 6.7 seconds left in the half. They're only down one. They have the ball. They could go up one. They could go up two. The worst they should do is get a shot off, right? So here they are. He's got a cut or nothing. And now you see this defender right here. He's reading the play. And why isn't the offensive player looking down low or looking to drive? I don't know. But he makes a very sloppy pass. And we see the result is a turnover, layup on the other side, missed it, offensive rebound and a foul, all the worst things that could possibly happen. So, you know, you go into your film session, and this is already cut. You don't have to go looking for it. You know, this is – you tell your team, hey, within the last 15 seconds of the half – this is what we did last time. Next time, let's do the, the next, the, the best thing. Okay, here's perhaps the best man defense of the game so far. All out hustle. Watch this red team now. Now they're down five, second half. They know their, their season's on the line. They started digging a little bit. So each guy is making plays. And now if I'm coaching the team, I say, hey, there's my film session. Uh, it's not just all bad news. You know, you can also highlight the good stuff. And here it is. They force a shot clock turnover right here again. So that's that. Go to the next clip. And, you know, you get the, uh, you know, the idea. Um, boom. And, you know, and then right just about the, the only about in the front chair on the top. Say again? Uh, it show, show about the comments about and the comments from up at the top. All right. So um, all the comments came from me because I'm the one who scored the game, but you know, if coaches wanted to make comments, uh, if you give the, the players access, they can do it as well. If you just want to have a film session with one of the players, say Ryan, just Ryan's um, comments would come up. Okay, so that's how you make individual film sessions. As you're scoring the game, if you want to make comments, um, all those comments will be assembled in order efficiently for you. Does anybody have any other questions about scoring the game? Don't see Simple. Them. I mean, you know, when, when I first started doing it, um, you know, it takes a minute to just kind of get the hang of it. But once you get into a rhythm, um, you know, this game, this is a 40 minute game. It took me about an hour and a half to score this game. And, and these are two teams that I've never seen before. Their personnel. Um, so if you're scoring your own games, you know, you can start off and say, hey, okay, it's going to take me twice as much time as it does, um, you know, to, 
for, for the amount of minutes that are in the game, and then you'll get faster as time goes on. But while you're doing it, you're getting more and more insights uh, and tracking the things that are important to you. Nancy has Nancy's yeah. question. Are you reflecting the defense that your opponent is in? Definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, as you're scoring the game, you can say, you know, what defense the opponent is in. Um, you know, if, if you don't do it, it'll just show up as unassigned and go back later. What are the um, ways you can upload video? Jerry is asking specifically, can you upload the video from Huddle to do the scoring if you were still using? Because I, uh, I know yeah. I know a lot of people may like this, but their AD already pays for it. Huddle, you guys know what I'm talking about, where they still like your software and may want to get it, but they already have Huddle, like the Huddle camera or whatever in their gym. That's what's recording it. What are the devices or what, how can you upload the film? So with Huddle, you can, they let you download it. So you basically download it to your computer and then upload it to our to our servers. Um, we can't access it directly because Huddle wouldn't give us access. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and, and again, you're normally, um, you know, unless you're using their cameras, um, you know, like like for my team, I just have a parent filming with an iPad um, way up in the stands. Um, so as long as you can download it from Huddle, you just re-upload it into our servers and, and off you go. What are you guys using? Vim? What what video host are you guys using? Uh, so we use we have a variety of ways you can upload to YouTube if you want. Um, our own recommended one is we have a, a private Vimeo server that we give everyone access to for free. Um, it uploads to Vimeo and it um, adjusts the uh, the playback rate depending on what your bandwidth is, and it, it works pretty well. Uh, can you look at season stats to determine your most effective offense? versus a particular defense? Yeah, so typically you're gonna be running different sets um, versus offense and defense. Um, so, you know, you, if, if you did run, say the same five out between man and zone, you'd probably label it slightly differently. Um, that could be something we do in the future if we get more people asking about that. But most of the coaches we've talked to, they have like sort of one set of offenses against man and one versus against the zone. Um, but yeah, that that could certainly be done. We just um, nobody's asked about that before. So only other questions that I have up so far, unless they're going to trickle in here. Yeah, a lot of a lot of good questions in, in chat, guys. Um, so it's fun to see what coaches are thinking about. What's next on the development path? What's coming? Um, you know, a lot of, you know, the way I've done businesses in the past and this one too, it's really based upon what, what coaches are asking for. Um, you know, we plan on doing some more uh, visualizations on um, like the game summary that we saw, we saw the margin and stuff like that. I think we're going to add more visualizations about you know, which players are in with particular times. And if there was a, an event of note, like a, a timeout or a technical foul or something like that, and then kind of seeing how that would affect the flow of the game. Um, you know, we, we're planning on doing something where we're tying rebounds to shots. So you can see, you'll be able to mark off a particular area of the floor, say your corner threes, and then see where the rebounds came from in that particular place. Um, but really, you know, a lot of the stuff is organic. You know, the more coaches we get using this and the more stuff you ask for, um, you know, it really helps us make a better product. You know, so, so you know, above and beyond just, you know, paying the subscription price, which, by the way, is a lot less than um, Sports Code or Synergy or, or Huddle. Um, you can kind of think of it as your IT team, you know, as, as you, uh, you know, as you use this stuff. Uh, say, hey, I would be great to know X, Y, Z. Um, how do we determine that? And um, you know, more often than not, we'll just go ahead and, and add that to the updated software. Um, yeah, we have considered offering a uh, service where you can pay someone to break down the film. Again, you know, outside people don't know the things you emphasize in your sets and that sort of thing, like the basic stuff like shots and everything else. Um, yeah, yeah, shots and assists and all the basic stuff someone from the outside can do. Um, and then the coach will come back in. Um, 
that you know we do get asked that a lot that'll probably happen um but we're not quite there yet um then nancy asked make it real time uh that's a little trickier to score these things real time because the stuff happens so fast um you could do that um you know it's so when you're scoring the games i find there's a lot of stop and starting and that sort of thing um just to you know get the locations and the shots right and that sort of and that sort of stuff um i mean you could certainly you know do this real time and just marking your sets and your outcomes and that sort of thing um you can also do this for scouting too you know just the stuff that you, you saw mike doing you don't have to do it that way right if you want to just like take a team a, a film of two of your opponents and maybe you're just like focusing on their best player and and uh, you want to see how often they dribble left and how often they dribble right, for example. You can add those as custom actions, mark that as the player, um, come up with a full scout using the same technology, just with a different set of actions that you're tracking. And uh, you'll have a pretty good, you know, video link scouting report. Um, much better than, you know, even like some of the, the G League things that we've, we've seen that don't even do that. So there's a lot of, you know, creative ways you can use the technology above and beyond, beyond just like scouting or scoring your own stuff. I'm, I'm just curious, but if you guys want to write in the chat, what services are you using right now? Probably majority of the people are huddle, if I had to guess, the high school coaches. And actually, kind of curious to see what you guys are paying for it, too, if you're willing to share that information. I can, so we, we talked I to mean, someone today, they were paying, what, 3500 for huddle, Mike? 3500 yeah, for two yeah, yeah, for two teams, yeah. Last time I paid for it at Patriot, it was 1300 for for the assist and just one team. No, like, I mean, I, I mean, I'm, I'm the lone person. I'll put what I use. I use this. I use these guys. And I actually pay less than what I paid for Huddle. The basic package, the basic package, Mike and Bill for Huddle. I don't know if it still is. Just to do their storage and you and you tag it yourself, at one point was like four hundred dollars. So, right? Yeah. 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 Most of the, yeah, what yeah. Huddle. What Huddle did was they put those cameras in and got people set up with the AD packages and stuff. So. Right. Right. Yeah. And and you know the, the thing about Huddle is it's it was originally a football system, and they've kind of you know migrated to other sports. Um, you know this was basically built for basketball from the ground up. High you know, school packages. Our, our coaches and and yeah, this is the stuff that I want to know as a coach. Um, That's what I pay. Yeah, Twelve fifty. Yeah. But that includes access to D1, D2, D3, and NAIA games. <laughs> okay. That's what, I mean, but I, they, they, I think most people get it for 1500. They gave me a little bit of a deal, so. And, and are they scoring for you too, or is it just? Um... Um, they'll do my games and they'll do scouts. Okay. So, yeah, and you know, synergy is okay for the scouting, but for your own stuff, um, we actually have a blog post coming next week or the next couple of days about the differences between um, synergy and, and hoopsalytics. And I think you know, why I you think, should use what we do. I think you guys should show your prices and people will get blown away, to be honest. So. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> <you know, laughs> um, for a, a high school level, uh, elite, it's uh, $300 for a year. Um, if you're just doing a single team right now, it's 99 for the year. Um, you know, for the, the higher level colleges, um, just talk to us, we'll, we'll catch you a great deal. Um, you know, right now we're not you know, trying to catch you guys. We're basically just been trying to get as many, uh, you know, motivated coaches as possible using this and, and just getting, you know, more feedback and product ideas and just making the best possible product we can. So, um, you know, you, you guys, if you decide to sign up, you're actually going to be part of part of our team, in, you know, making the whole thing better for everybody else. Um, yeah, actually, <laughs> it's a good point on the breakdown service. I find when I look at some other 
uh, films, especially girls, because they've got like their ponytails are covering up the numbers, and it's really hard to see who's who's what. Um, so yeah, yeah until they. Suggestion. I felt bad for Huddle and Synergy and those services out here in California. They'd have black jerseys with black numbers on them. Yeah. I don't know how you could figure out who's who. Yeah, and and again, a lot of the stats are going to get are inaccurate too. Um, we talked to someone this morning that was using Huddle, and that was one of his complaints that they often give the, you know, the, the wrong event to the wrong player, and it kind of messes up your whole. Um, Devin, that's why I use Synergy. Yeah. Same cost. Yeah. <laughs> so instead of instat that's the reason why i use synergy over instat instat's pretty good too to get access to stuff but they don't yeah yeah, yeah and again these servers have a, a great library of stuff you know if you you know if you're thinking of running a zone defense for example you can look at uh syracuse and um you know watch all their games and yeah see how they handle based on the inbounds for example um Okay, yeah. Um, and actually, we should be doing um, native currency stuff too. Uh, Adrian says we should be uh, offering in Australian dollars. Um, yeah, no, we'd, we'd love to have a, a pilot in Australia for sure. Do you oh, guys? Uh, yeah, the, the other thing too is because you guys are all um, with system basketball, we're offering a 25% discount on top of this. So if you guys use the promo code system, um, you'll save 25% as you go. Yeah, so there you um, go. Yeah, and then our, our contact info, Mike just put his in um in the chat. He's Mike's at hoopsalytics.com. Um I'm Bill at hoopsalytics.com. You can also just reach out to us through the website. Um hoops, is it, A L Y T I C S dot com. Bill, is it capital is it all capitalized the code? Uh, what for the email? For system. oh yeah, the, the, the code, yeah, it's all capitalized. I just put it in there too. Yeah, yeah, there you go. I mean, I think it, it should be case insensitive, but um, there's the code. So a three hundred dollar yeah. package becomes a what two twenty five package? Uh, yeah, if my math's right. Yeah. And again, if if any of these coaches out there want something more personalized, or you want to do something one on one, just to reach out, we'll we'll set up a private Zoom call for you guys, and uh, um, you know. Hear what your needs are and get you going. It looks like Bill Baxter's got a, 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 a championship <laughs> ring of some sort. Bill's showing off. Oh, I got to let him unmute himself now. Bill won't. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Bill. You can talk now. Unmute yourself. Uh, it, Hit on mute, there. Bill. Left hand corner. There, you're still muted. Left-hand corner of your phone or bottom of your phone. You're on a phone, so I'm not sure how to do it. Uh, there he goes. Are you there? There's Bill. Yeah, there you are. Okay, I'm going to type with my left hand so you don't see any ring other than the wedding ring. <laughs> oh. Oh, I, th I thought you were just showing off your ring, but you were actually typing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Whatever. I should have more. <laughs> My, the real question is, Bill, when are you going to do your run and jump clinic for me, man? I got to get on that for you. I'll tell you later my difficulties. Oh, I know it's tech. We, we can work on tech. I can help you. Okay, cool. <laughs> That's one of my difficulties. I have several because, others. Because um, I always forget her name. Delta College. Uh, shoot. I forget her name. Uh, she always tells me the same thing, that she has technology issues. Gina. Gina, yeah. She does. <laughs> she just got Luc Lucio, too. She did. Yeah. I, I, I recommended that to her after what you guys did. <laughs> yeah. No, but that, um, it's great stuff. I, I remember, Bill, me and you doing the demo, and I, I asked you a bunch of questions, and, and you knowing that I use Synergy, because in my opinion, you got crossover huddle, vid swap, those those people. Then you have synergy was a, is above them. Sports code kind of goes above synergy, right? And I'm like, so the different reports that you guys have, and I'm like, 
Well, Synergy doesn't do that. The only drawback is, I think what people are saying, and this is feedback for you guys, is the done for your service. And I understand completely why you don't because your reports are so much more high tech on what you can label everything. You can custom label everything that you guys did into your own, like me being a dribble drive coach, I could say paint touches, kick ups, how we, that we scored off of a kick up. We scored off of a paint touch kick out. We scored off a paint touch dump, like all that verbiage that I could use where you're paying synergy, but they're not going to change your verbiage for you. Someone's doing it. Someone's coding it for you, saving you time. So in the, in the morning or whatever, it's done, it's ready for you, but it's not necessarily analytically, which I think is where you guys excel. Um, yeah. And they're also not tracking the custom stuff too. I mean, they have sort of their, their set library of things that they track, but anything above and beyond. And, it's, it's kind and of like I know, I know, I know, um, Matt Curley really well at Synergy and not everybody doing the coding are basketball coaches. Yeah. <laughs> if you will. Yep. So it's, it's basically by coaches for coaches. So yeah. But it doesn't get much more coach centric than that. So I mean that's my thing that that when you did the demo with me that I came came out with was because I, when I originally first had Huddle before they had Assist, I was, I was doing it. When they, I think, I think when I got Assist the first time or Huddle the first time is when they gave everybody the mini iPads. When you signed up, that was part of their. Before they did the cameras, they gave everybody mini iPads to go record, and then you had the app that you could tag. It was easier to tag from your iPad. I don't even know if you could tag at that point from your computer. I think you had to tag it from the iPad. Hmm. And actually just, you know, speaking of our competitors, um, uh, it's really easy to share your games with other coaches as well. You can share just the video, you can share um, video and summary stats, or you can share video and detailed stats. Um, so if you, you know, send it to another coach, they can, you know, get a copy of the game and whatever level of detail you want to want it there. Um, so that's super easy. And there's also an export to MacPress too for your help, uh, high school coaches if you want to upload to MacPress. You can either do like again summaries, just like you know points scored, or you can do detail, you know, um, make thought, mid thought, percentages, all that stuff. Um, so it, it plays nicely with some of the, you know those things that coaches expect. Well, appreciate uh, you guys, uh, my players, and oh, that's. That was Mike's. My players enjoyed the film session. I thought that was another question popping up. <laughs> oh, no, just a comment for everybody. Yep. Um, yeah, and it's also iPhone friendly, too, so your players can, uh, you know, get their stats on the iPhone and, and watch the video um, in a way that they're more comfortable. Um, so, you know, there's probably a few things that we didn't cover during this, but you guys sort of get the, the main idea, and you know, hopefully you can all see why it um, you know, this will help you make better decisions as a coach. It's kind of what it's all about. And the and the website again, guys, is HTT is yeah, it's hoops a l y t i c s. A l y. It, it's like analytics without the a n. So hoops analytics analytics. Is that it? Uh, that's the, that's the wrong. That's got to put. There yeah, yeah, there yeah. Put it in. There you go. Yep. That's it. <clears throat> And one more time for you, if you want to and save a little coin, there's your code. Yep, just that system, just use system and you'll save 25%. Yep. So, and schedule demos with them. They'll, they'll do it with you guys too, so. But right, thanks, Mike. Thanks, Bill. Uh, yeah, Men Mark, thank you again for uh, giving us the opportunity to share with everyone else. No, no problem. I, as you guys probably know with that are members of my stuff and I don't really affiliate anything or have it stuff that comes on like, like stuff like this, unless I actually believe in the product, like, um, Lucio sports, like people know, I talk about them and stuff. Um, and 
some people know, some people don't know on here. They actually, um, since I was using it and I was putting it on social media, um, for about the last six months, they've hired me to do all their social media. So all the social media posts are actually from me um, on their site. Um, so um, they helped, they, because they were starting to say, by me doing the posts and stuff of using their product, they're like, we keep getting all these questions asked about our product because of you. So um, they said, um, maybe he knows what he's doing a little bit with his own business. So he um, will bring him on and he uses it. So that's another one. And I also, I use it and pay for it. I, I am a proponent of, of Synergy as well, but I love what you guys are doing too. Probably will be a customer. Of your guys is here shortly too. And love what you guys are doing. I think you guys are just hitting the, hitting the, hitting the, the grass and hopefully you guys kind of explode this season for you guys. Thanks a lot. You know, we just want to make it affordable and give pro level, um, you know, box scores and stats and video all linked together. I mean, it really is a college level program that we're making available at the high school and even at the youth level. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to make it so that, um, any coach who is dedicated to their team and wants to get better uh, will have access to it. So, you know, we just want to make sure that we get it into the people's hands who, who really want to use it. And, you know, we're here to assist and support in any way. I appreciate you guys doing this. And if I can be any assistance with you guys, let me know. And if anybody needs anything, um, as far as scheduling this week, um, I got to confirm it. But the plans are for Sunday night, Steve Prome uh, is back at Murray State, um, who co he coached uh, when Ja Morant was there. He was the head coach. Then he moved, on to, moved on to Ohio State or Iowa State, I'm sorry, for a while. And now um, he's supposed to come speak Sunday night. I just got to confirm it, make sure it's still good with his his schedule. Um, D1 guy's schedules get kind of funny, so I got to pin him down and make sure that he's coming on Sunday night. But that's the plans for another uh, clinic this Sunday night for you guys. We'll be talking like some ball screen offense concepts and stuff like that that they did when he was at Murray State and what he's planning on doing some more. So if you guys enjoy how Murray State plays, the guy that took over and won a lot of games basically ran the same system. So um, I'll, we'll see. Um, check your emails for the invites for that one and uh, best of luck the rest of the week with basketball. And if you need anything, reach out. Yeah, thank you, Mark. All right, guys. Have a good evening. Good night, everybody.